Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. This is Heidi DIY Knitting Podcast, where me, Heidi, does some DIY, mostly knitting. Today I am battling against the daylight, so I have a few filming lights set up right here, but if something looks off, that is probably why. As you may know, I live in Finland, and during winter we don't have that much daylight. It's becoming darker and darker after 2 p.m. and by 4 it is already pitch black. <laughs> let's not get stuck with that and let's go straight to the whips and FOs. And we'll start with FOs. Grab something nice to drink, like coffee or tea, and your favorite knitting project or crochet. We don't discriminate here. Today is a special episode, and by that I mean that I have small finished objects. So they are not sweaters, they are not cardigans, they are small FOs and whips. Well, I have one cardigan. Uh, no, no, not a cardigan. It is a sweater. Um, but yeah, let's start. First, I have these very basic mittens. And there is nothing. Well, there is some oh, little loop of yarn. Um, well, there is nothing super special about these. I drafted these myself because, well, uh, these are so simple. Um, there is no ribbing, just straight, then increases for the thumb, gusset, and after that there is decreases, then it's straight and this kind of round. What is it called? It's not a toe. Well, the top of the mittens. And this is the result. They are this grey beige <laughs> color. And I used heavy merino from Knitting for Oli that was left over from earlier projects. And it was in the colorway Dusty Moose. And it is still so funny to me. Dusty Moose. Well, and with that I held Crea Deluxe Silk Mohair. And it was this grey, grey color. But it has this slight tinge of green. So it's like a grey, greenish grey. I love all the ish colors, like purplish, brown and pinkish, beige and so on. But yeah, these are very basic mittens. This kind of bothers me, but we'll let it slide. Yeah, I have, I must say, I have tiny hands. So I think I had like 32 or 30 stitches here. I think 32 and it fits like a glove. <laughs> well, that's funny. Um, yeah, these are my basic mittens. I'm usually not a mitten person. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it is because I hate doing the thumbs or not even hate. I'm not sure it's hate. It's not the right word. I mean, they somehow annoy me. <laughs> I am uh, I am disproportionately annoyed by thumbs. So that's why I usually don't knit them. But now I did. And to your surprise, there is another FO that is also a pair of mittens. And these beauties are the flower knot mittens 
by Laurel Nitz. And they are just so pretty. I love this like deep, deep green color and paired with this pattern. It was just a joy to knit and I rarely knit mittens and I rarely knit patterns twice, but I think I might knit these again because I might want another pair. I was a test knitter for these and I knit the size one and it used less than 50 grams of the merino and less than 25 grams of the silk mohair. I used, if I'm not mistaken, it was the Mominaki uh, sock yarn that my friend Yen kindly gifted to me and a spare ball of Crea Deluxe silk mohair. And I think the combo is just stunning. The Mominaki, the sock yarn, was a bit more like a bluish ink color and the silk mohair is like very deep forest green. It's like almost black but green. And I love the com combination. And I think I will be on a mission to make the knitted accessories, like sets for myself. I think I have said this for multiple years now, but it has always, um, it has always ended to the fact that I don't like to make mittens. But now I have mittens, so I can make matching beanies and scarves and so on. I have nothing bad to say about the pattern. It was very well written and this fit really, really nicely. I love that there is a ribbing on the other side, so it fits snugly because we need warmth here in Finland. And if it's too loose, then it, the cold air goes inside your mittens and your hands will be cold. They are pretty. And this is my last FO. It will be probably some kind of loophole that I will go into because this is from a book that was recently published. And it is the, I'm, not, I'm going to say it in the Finnish way and then try to pronounce the, how it's actually pronounced, but Terpsikore or Terpsikore uh, scarf from Sari Nordland's book, Softly Timeless Knits. Yeah, it is just amazing. I must say right now that I was gifted the book because I was a sample knitter for the book. And I was actually the one who knitted this beautiful piece here in the cover. It's so fun to think that so many people around the world have seen this pullover that I made. But yeah, Sari was of course the designer, but um, it is the actual knit that I made and that just makes me feel a bit giddy. But yeah, I was gifted this book by Sari and the Cozy Publishing and I will talk about it a bit later. But yeah, the Terpsichore, um, my friend Doxy, this is her Instagram, tried to teach me how to pronounce all of the names since she is Greek and the, all of the patterns are inspired by different Greek like goddesses and mythology. But yeah, Terpsichore. And it is a triangular small 
scarf. As you can see, I have not blocked it, so it is still a bit wonky, but you can see how it goes. It was a very addicting project and I love how this um, cable here at the edge just continues to the I don't know, top, to the widest part <laughs> of the um, scarf and then it continues right till the end. Um, I made a small modification. I think I have one or two less of the uh, cables. So this is a bit smaller than what is written in the pattern. And that is because I was a little bit worried if I will run out of yarn. But that was not a concern. I had some leftovers as well. And I used the Lumava Silky um, from like Mesmerizing Silk uh, from a Finnish company, which is a 50-50 merino and silk blend held double with knitting for olive soft silk mohair in this uh, plum clay colorway. And the color is very interesting. It is very hard to pinpoint if it's brown or lilac or like purple, but well, I call it purplish brown. It, it is more brown than purple, but it definitely has some like purple plum kind of undertones. And as you can see, it matches my nails. Uh, I asked you yesterday uh, if I should paint my nails this color or this dusty brownish pink and this was the one you chose and if you want to participate in this kind of important decisions head over to my Instagram after watching this video but yeah I love it it is so cute I love the knitting process um, and it is, without blocking, it is just goes two times around my neck. But I'll probably wear it like this. Don't mind the ends. like this or maybe it goes very nicely in one's head I don't know but it needs a good block before doing that and it has been waiting for a block for a week now I don't know why it took me so much time or it has taken me so much time I just haven't haven't done it but yeah I will do it today so I get to wear it because it is cold and this is the perfect size for putting it in your bag just in case and it gives you a little warmth but it's not overly like suffocating warm this actually came in a perfect time since one of my favorite little scarves has been the Laulu shawl or Laulu scarf from sorry, sorry, Nordland as well, but I lost it. It was in my neck or on my neck, around my neck, sorry, grammar, and then I put it on this stroller. We were at this um, shopping center with my child and then suddenly it was not there. I went all around searching for it, but somebody must have taken it. So, But now I have a new one in this 
beautiful shade. I really do think this fits me very nicely. And it is, it is actually very similar to my eyeglasses. Tepticore, shawl or scarf. I think I need to make a matching pair of mittens with these ones as well. And while we are on the topic of softly book, I have a very surprising knit in that it is a gift knit. If I don't get too selfish and just keep it to myself. But we'll see. And that is from the book these kind of socks. I would pronounce it Telksinue, but I have no idea how to pronounce it correctly. It has this beautiful, like almost braided cable pattern. And it, it is so engaging to knit. It didn't take me many days to knit the first one. And it is so pretty. The pattern is originally written for DK weight yarn. Um, but I know that my knitting is usually quite loose compared to Sari's knitting. So I used a sport weight yarn that I had in my stash. This is the Ara yarn and I think it is the Mieli base. So it is hand dyed and merino wool. So sport weight and I actually used 2.5 millimeter needles to get <laughs> the right fit and I made the size one. And this is going for my brother's girlfriend. Hopefully it fits and hopefully I don't get too selfish and want to keep these for myself. Just look at how the cables are flowing and traveling down the front of the sock. It is just beautiful. And this is unblocked, as, as you can probably see, as I tend to just block a lot of things and then let them dry. Still needs a pair. I have used my own tip, which is that never leave a project that needs to needs a pair to something, never leave it just like this. You need to cast on, at least create the stitches because it is so easy to just never do it if you, if you don't do it right away. This is tips from the ADHD knitter. Yes, you are welcome. So, a telksinoe. I will put it down here and I will try my best to link the patterns and the pattern names to the description. Sometimes I don't do that because it takes quite a lot of time and I don't have a lot of time, but I try my best. So some Christmas gift knitting. It is not very typical of me, but I was in the mood for this. I love this like mm, watery sea green, light sea green color. It is pretty. Then there is the biggest one of all projects. So we have moved on to the whips. Actually I have forgot one of my FOs and that is the look up cardigan. I actually don't have it with me but here is a picture of it. And that is because my daughter didn't wear it. She was not able to keep it on for a minute. She is very, uh, she has a lot of sensory sensitivities. So I'm not gonna force her. If it doesn't feel comfortable, she doesn't need to wear it. 
and I think it must have been the texture of the cardigan. The yarn itself was quite soft, but the textured stitches were too, I don't know, I, I almost wanted to say triggering, but that is not the word I was looking for. They were just not right for her. So I sold it to my colleague's little girl and hopefully it gets a lot of wear and love. So last time this whip was just a small piece of back panel, but now it is almost an entire sweater. And as you can see, there is not much left anymore. So this is the zero, no, 1031 sweater by Ozerta or Ozera, not sure about the pronunciation. And it is very oversized drop shoulder sweater with a one by one ribbing and the calves, neck, band, and at the end. And it's gonna be big and cozy and just so lovely. I love the color. It is this dusty pink. I'm using Cascade 220 in the colorway Dusty Pink and Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the colorway Dusty Rose. And they are slightly different colors, but they create this beautiful, very, very subtle marling. And this has been very quick to knit. Um, as I will mention later in the live update, um, part of this video, I have been very sick and this has been very comforting and easy knit to knit while I am sick, basically. The pattern originally uh, is written for 6mm needles, but I got gauge with 5mm, so I am a loose knitter, I don't want to squeeze the needles. Yeah, it has been quick nevertheless. I love the long calves and when I block them, I will block them to be straight so they don't go in as much. I have not made modifications, I think. Um, the neckband I actually knitted. Oh yes, I did make modifications. Let's talk about it. So I made that neckband twice because first time I think I tried to follow the instructions that you have to take like one size smaller needle to, to make this neckband. And it came out just way too tight. It was cinching the fabric too much and mm, it was just way too tight. So I made it again with the 5mm needles. And the modification I made is that I didn't just knit the tube and fold it. I used a technique that Petit Knit uses in many of her patterns and that is to knit a number of rows in double knitting so K1 and slip one yarn in front so it creates this natural folding line that still has like the ribbing effect and I think it looks very neat and professional minimal but also like, yeah, you know what I mean. It just looks fancy. And I am here at the hem and I will probably do another modification 
here. Since the pattern recommends a 10 centimeter rib, there will be a split here at the hem. Um, but I will probably continue to the same length as the sleeve and maybe even longer with the back, back piece since I have probably <laughs> enough yarn. Um, I'm not sure with the silk mohair, um, but I probably have enough yarn and I think that the slightly higher and then slightly higher hem at the front and slightly like longer in the back is gonna look great. And I just love the color, it will be so cozy and I already have so many outfit ideas for this one. This will look so nice with skirts and I just have so many, so many good outfits in my head. I have been doing these um, uh, like everyday outfits mostly with knits but there are some with, with no knits uh, in my Instagram. So if that kind of thing is interesting to you, go and check them out as well. But yeah, 1031 sweater by Ozetta. And can we agree this is very much my color? Love it. I always joke that everything that has the word rose is usually my color. I actually have some lip color that I think there was a rose in the colorway name as well. I basically have two whips left, but I'm gonna show you only one because the first one that I'm not going to show is the cherry dress that just hasn't progressed that much, maybe this, this much, but I will, after finishing this sweater, I will pick it up and push myself a little to finish it because I want to wear it. It's starting to be the prime season for knitted dresses in here since it is minus degrees and you need wool. But there is also so much knitting. It feels so slow because it is just round and round in this quite oversized fit with four millimeter needles. Four millimeter is not small needle, but it just feels small when you are knitting a dress that is supposed to go over your knees. And the last whip I have is my pathetic <laughs> effort to try to knit something for my daughter that she would like to wear. And that idea came when I went to the thrift store yesterday and I found this yarn. It is this white, very soft yarn with this light baby pink, lilac and baby blue parts. And it is 100% synthetic. I think it was polyamide and acrylic. It doesn't feel the worst when knitting, I am kind of surprised. But usually I don't like to wear wear or, or knit with these types of yarns. They're just not comfortable for me. So no judgment if you like them. It's just not for me as a different type of sensory sensitive person. But with this yarn, I am trying to make a very much needed knit at this time of year. And that will be a collar. But I have this problem because it needs to be thick enough. This is very thin, like light fingering weight. And it needs to be smooth so that she likes to wear it. And I ended up going with this type of situation. So it is knitted double. I think I should have enough yarn 
so that on both sides it has this smooth surface so it doesn't have the pearl bumps or any texture it is just smoothness and I started this similarly to toe up socks but with a bit more stitches as you can see and I will continue and do the neck opening and the back and then pick up stitches for the collar. I will probably just go with trial, trial and error and try to see if I can manage to make it the way that she will enjoy, enjoy wearing it. She needs something to cover up her neck um, because it started to get cold and windy so it would be very nice if this was a successful successful journey with this one. But there's not that much to show you. It is not my favorite yarn, but I can manage it if it will be suitable for her. And if it's not, I will probably gift it to some of my friends' children. But uh, let's hope. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, yeah. And that is all my whips and FOs. Next I will talk a little bit about the book from Sari. And after that I will have a small knit and chat kind of life update type of situation. I don't have any acquisitions. I haven't bought any new yarn but I actually might buy some today, not from sale, but I will just buy because I am joining a very exciting test knit, says the girl who said that she's not going to do test knits for a while. But yeah, let's talk about the book. So this was gifted to me by Sari. And... I really love the book. Um, this is my own opinion, even though it was gifted to me. They haven't paid me to say this. I just really like this book. Um, here is the Terpsichore. It was one of my favorites uh, immediately. And it says that Terpsichore is a news of dance and her name means the joy of dance and i am just translating this from finnish to english while i'm reading so if it's not uh, the most accurate i'm sorry uh, so all of the knits have a name and this little description from the uh, greek mythology and the pictures have been taken in Paris and they are gorgeous. Uh, I actually love these pages where there are just some beautiful uh, inspiration photos from Paris. I don't mind them in the middle of the book. This is another one, a very practical knit that I will probably make, maybe in the shades of grey. Uh, to go with my basic mittens and it is called the Mneme Mneme I have no idea how to say um, which is the Muse of Memory and Memories and it is designed to use especially for uh, leftover yarns oh, this is the, what I'm talking about I love this kind of inspiration. I am a very like visual person, so I enjoy watching beautiful things even though they itself don't maybe have or bring any value, but beauty brings me value. I will show you a couple of my favorites and then we can move on. This is the Akelois 
top which has these beautiful cables I just love the construction and I love that it's so minimal but it has something special to it you know that's some kind of zest or something I think this would be great in white or something very light neutral and this is the Urania cardigan or Urania cardigan and it has this beautiful little, little detail, this cable going all around the button band and around the neck. And I really like this, this style of cardigan. It is again minimal, but it has something, some interest to it. I could show you all of those <laughs> designs because they are so beautiful. Um, but if you would like to see more, check out Sari's Instagram or YouTube channel because she has shown them a lot in there. Hi guys, it is a couple of hours later and I realized I forgot something. I was meant to be talking about this new uh, call this new knit along um, so I was contacted by Fer sorry if I pronounce your name wrong uh, from Unit Toronto and they are organizing the Violetta knit along and it started last Friday and to be totally transparent they gifted me the pattern, which is lovely. It is this one. If you would like to join the knit along, it is actually running till the end of January. So there is plenty of time and you need to just create a project on Ravelry um, with this Violetta pullover uh, pattern and you have a discount code if you would like to participate so you get the discount if you use this code on Ravelry while you are checking out I really love cows that have long long periods of time to knit uh, together since not everyone can start at this point. I might join myself during January, since now I have some gift knitting and bigger projects on the needles. But we'll see, maybe I will join as well. Thank you so much for gifting me this pattern and giving the generous discount for the um, viewers of this podcast. Now let's get back with a couple of hours before and start the knit and chat. Ah, that was a lot of talking. So let's uh, knit and chat for a bit. I will pick up this color theme since it is just going straight at the moment and let's chat a bit how are you guys and what are you knitting do you have any christmas knitting plans are you gifting something tell me and please share your thoughts about the things i have made or i am making or anything you can share let's open up so as i mentioned i have been sick for almost a month now and it has not been fun um, I haven't had a fever as an adult many times but it has been with me I have been so sick and so tired and coughing a lot and I actually had to go and get x-rays done because they were thinking that I might have pneumonia 
but luckily I didn't. I just probably had a shit ton of mucus in my lungs. But yeah, that has been hindering my life and my hobbies and when I don't move my like I have these uh, chronic illnesses and they don't really like the sedentary lifestyle I need to keep quite active to not fall apart <laughs> basically and not be not be in so much pain so it has been painful it has been quite boring it has been annoying but yeah that is also why there has not been a new episodes because i have been coughing my brains out and that is just just unfortunate but at least i got the time to knit a sweater the 0131 sweater so because it was very easy easy knitting i was not so smart all the time and i was also working while i was sick because sometimes as an entrepreneur uh, your income is dependent on if you can do a certain thing thing at a certain time and if you cannot do it you won't get paid about the thing so i was doing a lot of things at some point so that might also have been hindering my recovery i don't know if this is a worldwide saying but in finland we have this saying that the entire body is suffering because of the stupid head <laughs> so if your head is stupid your entire body will suffer and yeah if you make stupid decisions there might be um, not so fortunate um what is the word outcomes yeah and with that i also have a, a bit more exciting life update and that is that i am actually preparing for applying to medical school and it still feels weird to say it out loud but that is what i'm doing i have started to study to those um entrance exams or what is what they are called but they are in may but there is a lot to study and that is probably why i will i will pick a bit smaller and simpler designs during the spring because i need to use a lot of brain power to study and learn those things we need to know our physics and chemistry and uh, biology and for me some of those things i have i have been studying 10 years ago or more than 10 years ago in high school so it takes a while to learn those again but i will try my best and in helsinki where i will apply it is i think it was 3.28 percent that gets in the medical school uh, in helsinki so it is not the most likely option that i will get in but then i will study more and apply next year again but yeah that is my big life update and it is exciting and it also means that probably especially closer to the exams i will be more quiet here since i need to <laughs> i need to prioritize my brain power yeah i really hope that you will cheer me on and hopefully i will become a doctor 
it actually stems from my own experience with these more rare uh, chronic illnesses as there is so little people in Finland like doctors who know about these conditions or who have specialized in them and I want to be one of them uh, when I grow up. I am 30 by the way so it feels like I am too old but I also know that it's kind of never too late and if I don't do it now I will probably regret it later. So big life change and it's probably not gonna be the easiest to study and to work and to have a family and a social life and a knitting channel and knitting hobby but I will tr I will do my best and that has to be enough yeah we will see where this life goes and what is what is there to come I hope that everything is good with you that you are happy and healthy I hope that you have beautiful knits and other makes if you enjoy them and I hope that you enjoyed this episode thank you so much for watching and hopefully we will see you very soon bye